Hi, and welcome to the Modern Persian Food Podcast. We are food bloggers, Bita Arabian and Bita Nazim Kelly, and we're here to share with you the rich flavors and fresh ingredients of Persian cooking and how to incorporate them into today's modern lifestyles. We're excited to introduce you to the flavors, tastes, and techniques we use, and also our own cultural stories and perspectives growing up in the U.S. in a Persian family. Thank you for joining us. Welcome to episode number 68. Today, Pita and I are going to be talking about smoky Persian flavors. We're going to talk to you about how to create smoky flavors in your Persian dishes to enjoy. I'm here with the lovely Bita Jun. Hi there. How's it going? Hi. Good morning. I'm doing good. How are you? I'm not bad. Thank you. So when I think about smoky Persian flavors, the first thing that comes to mind for me is mahi dudi, is smoked fish that is typically served at New Year's for Eden Oruz, which is the first day of spring at the spring equinox, is a traditional meal of sabzi polo mahi. It's like a herb rice served with traditionally like a smoked white fish. So when I think of smoky flavors, immediately I start to think of that. And this product that you were going to tell us about today, I think would be like really great. I'm really excited to actually get some of this and try it for Noruz. And Bitaju, what is this great ingredient that (laughs) you have discovered and are playing around with and want to share with our listeners? Oh my gosh, yeah, such a buildup about this ingredient. But my interest was so piqued and I was so stoked at a holiday luncheon that we had with extended family where I learned about a new product I had never heard of before. And that is, wait for it, drum roll, smoked basmati rice, smoked rice that you buy. So I was so intrigued and interested. So my mother-in-law had discovered it. And she's pretty much like our Persian Martha steward of the family. She's like the queen of being able to throw together a dinner party of like luscious, beautiful Persian foods. And I thought, man, if she is excited about this and hasn't tried it, it must be something special. So, and guess what? Yesterday I drove over to her house and I said, can I please have a couple of cups? Oh, <laughs> so cute. So one tip she had for me, she's been experimenting with it for a while. She said, you got to make kate with it. It's like this smoked rice has the best results when you make kate. And guess what? We're going to talk about kate in an upcoming episode. So stay tuned for that. But more on this rice. So she gave me the entire bag, which was so generous. Of course, she kept a couple scoops for herself. But it is in this beautiful, pretty magenta pink bag. It comes already smoked, this Indian basmati rice. I did my whole deal of how I make kate, and it was absolutely delicious. It's got like a nutty flavor. So I really like the smoky, almost burnt, nutty flavors of things. And to be honest, like I kind of thought in my head is this going to taste like those early days of cooking when I would accidentally like get a burnt tatty or Mm -hmm. burn, you know, like the bottom of my rice where it gets all like weirdly smoky and burnt tasting, but no, it's very subtle and really delicious. So have I piqued your interest enough to try it? Yeah, I actually, I really want to try it for New Year's because, you know, it's not always easy to smoke fish, actually smoke it yourself. So this would be a great workaround to still get those same flavors associated with no ruse of the smoked fish and the rice, but in a much more manageable approach. You could just have regular fish if you wanted to, not have to smoke it and use the smoked rice and to get a really delicate pairing there. So I'm excited to try it. And it just sounds lovely. So the mahi dudi is the white fish that is smoked and served for New Year's. There's different recipes that you can find online and how you can actually smoke it yourself. I saw some recipes that you can actually do it indoors, but traditionally, if you can do it outside in a smoker or a barbecue that has a good tight fitting lid and actually smoked the wood chips yourself, yeah, you're gonna get like an amazing flavor. So that's such a beautiful thing. There's a couple different restaurants that we have around here that actually showcase smoked fish. So if you wanna give that a try, definitely do that. That's an area that we wanna learn a little bit more about. And if, you know, the listeners are actually interested, we are happy to get a special guest on the show to teach us some of those techniques of smoking. You know, I think charring is different than smoking. Right. But it still gives the essence. There's a lot of sort of 
grilling and charring in Persian foods and flavors, especially when it comes to kebab. Yeah. So what comes to mind immediately for me is tomatoes and onions. Yeah, absolutely. Grilling the tomatoes and onions alongside kebab, also corn on the grill. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So traditionally, the way that a kebab is actually made is like char grilled on top of like a flame on flat skewers. And so you really get the beautiful smokiness and a deliciousness of the fire and the char coming right onto the kebab. And like you said, there's also specific vegetables that accompany the kebab. So a lot of times there is tomatoes on skewers that get that dark char on them as well as well as onions and those are like really delicious and bring a lot of smoky flavor and I love that you brought up corn because charring corn brings out a lot of like the sweetness in the corn as well and I have a big cheat that if I don't have the barbecue fired up or I just want to have like grilled corn to either shave off to make into a salad or I know you have a great street corn recipe that you put that in the salted water but if if you have a gas burner, if you have like a gas stove, you can actually put it like right on the little grate and turn it every so often and it starts to get a little bit of a char all over it. Ooh, living dangerously straight on the fire. Yeah, straight on the fire. Here we are. I mean, in Northern California, it's cold. My grill's covered. Mm-hmm. I'm not using my outdoor grill, but you can still create smoky flavors. One of the cool things that I love to do is I have an indoor grill pan. Mm-hmm. It's not going to give the actual burnt flavor necessarily, unless you burn it, but I like to create the aesthetic Mm -hmm. of getting the little char lines. Mm -hmm. So what an indoor grill pan, and I've had a few over the years, what it is, is it has ridges in it Mm -hmm. in the pan, and I'm able to do burgers, kebabs, tomatoes, onions, and the grill pan and get the essence of a burner. Yeah. Another way to do the corn in a fun way, a friend of mine's husband, I was teaching him, telling him about Persian corn. And he pulled out his torch thingy. You know what I'm talking about? Like a creme brulee, the little handheld little torch lighter things. Yes. As they had corn, I was like, oh, Persian corn. But he was cooking in the oven. He wasn't grilling. And so he torched our corn. How fun. So that was a cool little cheat. Yeah, that's a great idea. And to your point about the grill pan, also, if you want to up that even a little bit more, if you use a cast iron grill pan, you're going to get a little bit more of that smokiness too from the cast iron pan getting really, really hot. Mm -hmm. Do you want to know my issue with my pans Hmm. is I think I need to get a cast iron one because the ones I've had have just been maybe a little bit more cheapo, but I have an issue of I think I've gotten the nonstick ones, Mm -hmm. and so they don't necessarily require a lot of oil. But when the nonstick wears off, Mm -hmm. then it becomes kind of like a whole mess. Yeah, you can get it hotter. You get it more hot without sticking and burning and stuff. Right. But, you know, it does have a little bit of maintenance with the cast iron, but this flavor is really special. So sometimes it's worth the extra work to keep the pan seasoned and make sure it doesn't rust. Yeah, good tip. But let's get back to your idea. I don't know if I am ready to just put things straight on my burner. You know, Uh I have a tendency to burn things. Yeah, but you got to stand there with like a pair of tongs and just constantly just kind of like turn it. Burn my house down? (sighs) Yeah, I don't want to burn my house down, but... Did you tell me once before about doing eggplant that way? Or did I see that on Instagram somewhere? Yeah, you could do that with the eggplant too. Again, you just have to kind of be there and monitor it and kind of babysit a little bit. You can get like a nice char. You can also get it under the broiler. So the eggplant is a great example of something that if you were to smoke it or to put it on the barbecue with the lid closed, you can have it cook in the inside and get a little bit of that smoky flavor. But yeah, eggplant in the broiler, it's super easy. It kind of like cooks and kind of starts to collapse as it's cooking. And you can just peel it off really easily. So Mm -hmm. eggplant is a great example of a ingredient that can get that smoky flavor. Yes. And it usually does. It's delicious that way. Yeah. I usually cook mine to what looks like it's burnt on the outside. I do mine in the oven. Yeah. And it's much better because, you know, the eggplant can soak up so much oil so that that way you're kind of making it not as heavy when you don't douse it in oil and don't fry it up. Mm -hmm. So you talked about using an ingredient that's already smoked 
Yeah. That smoked rice sounds amazing because you actually don't have to do any of the smoking yourself. You're just using an ingredient that's already been smoked and it brings that great delicious flavor. But, you know, there's other ingredients that are like smoked salt. You could buy smoked salt online or at specialty markets, and that could also bring a salty and smoky flavor to enhance your dishes. And also there's smoked butter. So that's another way that you can incorporate some of those smoky flavors without having to go to the extent of actually getting wood chips and smoldering them and making smoke to actually smoke your food. Yeah. Or the liquid smoke and things like that. Yeah, there is liquid smoke. You have to use it very, very sparingly. And it kind of takes a little bit of trial and error to kind of get the level that you want. And there's different types of smoke that you can get, different flavors of liquid smoke. So if you are interested in experimenting with that, start slow and start with small amounts first and gradually build it up so you can get kind of the flavor profile that you're looking for. I'm super interested in the smoke salt. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know that San Francisco Salt Company makes a good one. Oh, okay. Yeah. So this was a great opportunity to just share with our listeners that smoked foods are definitely a part of Persian cuisine. And especially as we get closer to no ruse, as we're thinking about kind of more innovative and fun ideas to bring to your New Year table, this is a great product to start fostering our imagination. We hope we've planted the seed of how to create some smoky food charred delicious flavors in your Persian food. And with that, we have an Ask the Beats today. Yeah. Rebecca from Canada. Rebecca from Canada wants to know, Beats, where are you from? (laughs) Oh, fun. I think this is a great question. You know, I think we have a bunch of new listeners. Thank you all for listening to the show. So Beats, go ahead. You go first. We're two Beatas, spelled differently, but we are two Beatas. We both have the same name, coincidentally enough. So Beats, you go ahead. You start. Oh, okay. So you know what? I get that question a lot. I don't know. I think I don't have very like traditional appearance. And so I sometimes it creates questions and they're like, where are you from? Oh, a traditional Persian appearance. Right. Uh, Yeah. You know, I got my fake blonde hair. I got, you know, (laughs) dark skin, light eyes. And it's just like, where are you from? I used to get that a lot. I never would know how to answer it. My answer used to always be, well, that's a loaded question. How far back do you want me to go? (laughs) I was born in Iran. I grew up in Michigan. Yep. I went to college in Wisconsin. I'm Persian. I have Persian roots. I have Persian family. I have extended Persian family, married Persian family. However, I have also Midwest is where I'd say, that's where I'm from. Like I'm from Michigan and I lived in Wisconsin and I... Now have spent more time in California than I ever did in the Midwest. So now I'm a California girl. I live in the Bay Area. Our primary residence is in Northern California in the San Francisco Bay Area. We have two young adult daughters and four pets. (laughs) We also have a part-time residence in Orange County in Southern California. And that's about it. Give us your where are you from? Awesome. All right. And also, let me just add, Bita Jun has a great blog, ovenhug.com, where she talks about healthy Persian food. So definitely check out her site as well. Aw, thanks. Yeah. And I'm the other Bita. I'm Bita Nazim Kelly. I was born here in San Francisco and live here now in the middle of the city with my husband and two kids. Both my parents are Persian. My husband, though, is not Persian. So we're kind of doing a blending of cultures for our family. I lived in San Francisco pretty much most of my life except for a stint of about four years where I lived in New York City, which I loved and was a great part of my life and is where I actually started my food blog, BeatsEats.com. But I'm back in the city. I'm back in San Francisco. And Beats Ajun and I do this fun podcast every week. And we meet over Zoom. And we have a great conversation every week. And we love sharing that with our listeners. So thank you for being a listener to our show. Thank you, Rebecca from Canada for the great question. It's a great opportunity to share with everyone a little bit more about ourselves. Yeah, thank you for joining us. Welcome. If you're new, please subscribe. We have so many awesome guests lined up and a lot of great content for you coming. This was the Ask the Beat segment. So if you have a question about food or about us or about anything, really, let us know. And also, we'd love to hear feedback. Let us know what you liked, what you didn't like, any topics you want us to talk about. And we are happy to add that to our editorial calendar. And with that, Beats of June, I hope you have a really great day. And thank you for listening to all our listeners. Bye. Until next time. You've been listening to the Modern Persian Food Podcast with Bita and Bita. Thanks for spending time with us. 
If you've enjoyed what you heard today, consider telling a friend or giving us a good rating. You can subscribe to our show for free on your favorite podcasting app or find us online at modernpersianfood.com or on Instagram for the recipes and information we talked about today. We'd love to hear your thoughts and see you next time.